Great. Welcome to Senate Education. The week prior to uh, town meeting week, two weeks before crossover, uh, as we just discussed in Democratic caucus and maybe in Republican caucus as well, we have a lot of priorities to get out. Uh, I think we're going to be fine, uh, more than fine, unless we get any big surprises from our state librarian. Uh, <laughs> I, think we'll, I think we'll be in good shape. By the end of this week on uh, the two literacy bills, I'd like to combine them. I think it'd be, I don't know if we'll get the CT this week, but we, we may, I hope we do. I think we'll get the libraries this week and move those out of here. And then when we come back, we will have uh, a number of things to deal with, um, but we do have some extra time because we do have an H bill and we, I'm told we're getting a miscellaneous education bill from the house. And then the other thing that came up last week, I just wanted, Loop back to S120. This is an act related to post-secondary post schools and sexual misconduct. Um, Ms. Robinson and Ms. Koenig are getting together uh, this week to talk about that. And I texted both of them last evening, and I go, Senator Hashim, this is a priority for him. And he and I reached out to one another. And so hopefully they will bring something to this committee that everybody's in agreement on, and then we can you know, maybe move forward. Um, and then the only other thing that I see going on at the University of Vermont is a new logo, um, oh, uh, yeah. which is, yes, I just don't, I don't know if we're going to we it up this week. Yeah, but we'll close it out with something like that. Um, anything else? Okay. Ms. Del Neo, thanks a million for joining us. Uh, we have, we still have a few things to do in this bill on 303. Um, I think largely we have settled most of it. I think the one thing, and I think Beth, actually I talked to Beth, it is in here, she's watching, she's probably laughing if I'm asking again. When we do a final walkthrough, I just wanna make sure teachers have options around how they might get caught up in literacy. So if you don't have to do the modules, it means if you have a class, if you do all these kinds of things, and uh, when I did talk to Beth last, that was in here. But I know that's not why you're here specifically. You were here to talk about the Imagination Library. And prior to us going live, you and I had a conversation where you hadn't seen 4.1, uh, and you were working off an earlier version of the bill. And so let me just mention a couple of things. First of all, before we move into the Imagination Library, we have, we do have the state librarian or designee on the council, we've had, and you're That's good with great. that. Absolutely. Great. Um, and then what we were talking about in terms of the imagination pilot, uh, this is, I believe, the same stuff. What we're trying to do is we're thinking about, is there a way to create a fund that would allow programs throughout the state to access dollars that would put books in the hands of young children. We've taken enough testimony here to realize that I think I'm speaking for the committee. We, we couldn't, in good faith, prioritize AOE positions for this kind of thing. We couldn't do things, um, you know, it, it would just be too much. Uh, what we did think is maybe, and I would say maybe because I haven't even told everyone, is there a way to have $100,000 of fund that all of a sudden the Imagination Library in Rutland could access, some other programs could access, that sort of thing. And then the only other piece of this is I know a few of us have talked to Jana Brown in the house who is connected to Cliff. And uh, she, uh, I know she said she'd be willing to pop down at some point to talk to us. So this isn't, uh, this would be, if it works, I'd say, beautiful. If it doesn't, if it does, isn't going to help get books in the hands of kids in an efficient way, or then I, I don't know if we would move forward. The only other person I talked to was Representative uh, Tesha Bus yes. for a while uh, and kind of threw this out at her as well. So the House is a little bit kind of engaged in it, but I'm not, I wouldn't say that they've endorsed it by any means. 
So that's where, it's, where we're at. Thank you. Shall I just start with our testimony? Yeah. Oh. My name is Catherine Delano. I am the state librarian and the commissioner of libraries, and I'm here to provide joint testimony from myself and also from Secretary, uh, Interim Secretary Boucher, who is the Interim Secretary of the Agency of Education. Great. And just to be clear, you're not going to even talk about the earlier. You're going to talk about what I just talked about. The only thing you that know. I'm I will say one thing, yeah. which is that I absolutely support the inclusion of the state librarian or their designee on the council great and um, i appreciate that that has made it this far in the bill and as i'm providing testimony you'll see why that's so important and how i think in the long term that will be to the good of early literacy of the state um so as you were just sharing um the secretary and i we were responding to the draft that we saw the committee discuss i think on thursday last week which was draft 1.1 so uh, we prepared testimony jointly on that, and um, I just have seen draft 4.1 now, so I'll try to pivot a little bit and incorporate things that are relevant still from draft 1.1. I really appreciate the opportunity to provide testimony to you on the topic of S303 and after related to supporting young readers. We really appreciate the committee's interest in this topic, and we really appreciate the commitment that you all have to helping young readers in Vermont be ready for kindergarten, be ready to, to succeed with reading. And we greatly respect the work of Dolly Parton as both a recording artist and as a leader in children's literacy, and also greatly respect the senator who brought the bill forward um, and others in the House who have brought similar bills forward in the past. Um, we really appreciate the committee taking our concerns seriously and contemplating um, what we're sharing today. And after having had the opportunity to, to carefully review draft 1.1, and now briefly review the um, draft 4.1, mm -hmm. and also to, to listen in on the committee's discussion last week, I'm here to present you with our additional feedback and concerns. So we believe that the grant program as contemplated, while well-intended, may be duplicative of work happening at a local level and that it may not truly meet the committee's goal of expanding access to books for kids who are most in need. There's significant work being done in our state, both in public libraries, by the staff and agency of administration and schools, and by the Department of Libraries to ensure that children in Vermont have access to books in their communities and in their homes. Home libraries can definitely play an important role in fostering an environment of learning. That said, public libraries remain the best and largest source of free books for families, and public libraries support the emerging literacies needs of our state's youngest readers, and as I've spoken to the committee about earlier in the session, the needs of the parents and the child care providers, the grandparents, the caregivers, in learning to model behaviors with books. Public libraries welcome families to borrow books for home use that are based on the interest of each child and each family. And I will just make an aside here from the written testimony, which is that there is nothing worse than giving a child the wrong book. As, you, as a librarian, when you give my kids a trust book, when they want the dinosaur book, look out. That is not a great situation. So making sure that kids have access to books that are interest to them is so important and making sure that they are going to be successful and that there is a, a motivation for them to read. Um, our testimony was really in response to the state expansion model that was contemplated in version um, 1.1. And as we understood from the testimony from Ledge Council, um, that option is employed by certain states to proliferate the Dolly Park Imagination Library nonprofits. That bill proposed $100,000 in grant funds facilitated by AOE to be allocated to local schools, districts, uh, school districts, and public libraries so that there would be free books for children age zero to five in communities. Um, one thing that is clear from draft 1.1 and that I also noticed here in draft 4.1 is that. The program, as contemplated by both of these bills, talks about these matching funds. And the matching funds, as we heard from um, Ms. St. James from Ledge Council, and I believe also from Nora Briggs, the executive director of the Dolly Parton Imagination Library, that idea of the matching funds is really an idea of Dolly Parton's, I would say. It does not align with the Department of Libraries method of addressing equity concerns for the most high need families. And 
while I'm not a member of the agency of education staff, I don't believe that that idea aligns with their their values either. Yeah. Both of our both our department and agency strive to provide resources to youth in high need communities and households. And these um, these two drafts really don't talk about who gets the books. They talk about that there's additional money for the books. And I am very close with a child who grew up in Middlebury and um, was signed up on birth. And that child is um, the child of two academics. And there was those were supplemental, mm -hmm. but not necessary. With the Imagination Library, they were signed up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was yeah. there. Those are supplemental, not necessary books. With the limited funds that we have in our state, speaking for the department, I can say that my personal preference, um, our department's preference would be to find out which communities have the highest need, Love it. which libraries are um, have the staffing to support the program, mm -hmm. and to really do a wraparound kind of a program. Um, and not just say, here's some money, these organizations qualify for it and know how to go for it and go for it most quickly. Um, so as it, as both of them, both bills drafts, 1.1 and 4.1 are drafted, it's not clear whether the highest need communities in Vermont can afford to match the state funds or whether that matching fund requirement is really going to support those with the highest need for resources in our state. The agency and the department are concerned that the group's best position to take advantage of that state expansion model in 1.1 would be the local Dolly Parton Imagination Library branches. And in this current model, that 100,000, I think that what the committee was trying to do was to expand it so it wasn't in that expansion library model, even though it was called that, it was really, well, some other group could get it too, sure. because I think we're aware, as you know, Senator Gulick shared, about Cliff existing, we know there are some other models yeah. out there. Maybe some others could get the money. With 4.1, it's really back to Imagination Library. They're the only ones who could go for those funds. And that's a concern. So 4.1 does not reflect what I mentioned to you at the outset, clearly. I mean, the committee yeah. is, I think it's at six, beyond the Imagination mm -hmm. Library. Yeah. So Ledge Council will give us a redraft. Mm -hmm. But I think what the committee's grappling with is, is there a need out there that we should be addressing or not? Is there a problem with uh, our, our low-income Vermonters not accessing books of their own, have books of their own, that we can take some steps to address? Because we did hear that compelling testimony that yeah, it makes a difference. But that's, that's the way I would like you to maybe yeah. think about this. And, and the answer may be, there's no problem. Like, I, in other words, there's so many of these organizations already, but maybe there is something. Well, let me share, let me skip forward a little sure. in the prepared testimony, because I think that what you're asking is a question that would require a little bit more research. And one of the potential alternatives that we've outlined in the testimony that we shared with you today is that exploring statewide programs like Dolly Park Imagination Library, um, exploring other states' programs. The Department of Libraries in Idaho has a program that has been in existence since, hang on, let me check my notes. Since um, 1997, it's called My First Books. It is run by the state library. It is targeted at a certain number of libraries each year. The libraries apply. They don't just send books to a person's house. The kids pick them up at the library. They have a story time program that's really an enhanced learning opportunity for the caregivers, for the parents. That type of program might actually be a better way to meet the need than simply sending a set of books to a home. And I think that, you know, this is a very challenging budget year, and we're all aware of that, mm -hmm. all of the competing priorities. Um, Given the budget crisis facing our communities and with respect to the education fund this year, this may not be the best year to examine the implementation of a new program. I think both the agency of education and the department want to be sure that if we're committing to something, it's the right something. Mm -hmm. There are other programs that are even implemented at a federal level. Mm -hmm. There's a program called Reading is Fundamental. It yeah. started in 1996. Um, they have distributed over 412 million books to over 40 million children in all 50 states. This is a tried, trusted, true program that is really 
um, described by a lot of folks as kind of the gold standard, why not look at that as well? So one thing that this bill gets right, in my opinion, is involving the Department of Libraries in the conversation about what needs to happen in the public library space from the birth of the child till they're five years old. So my recommendation would be, let's have a little bit of time with the librarian on the council, the public librarian from the Department of Libraries, and let's look at these programs and let's see what might work for our state rather than moving forward with a program that it kind of feels like a hard sell. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're aware, but almost the same exact bill language came in front of the House Education Committee in 2022, and the second week I was in my position as state librarian. It was a little, it's sort of, this is sort of a thing that happens around the country where all of a sudden Department of Library staff or agents of education staff are scrambling to understand the program and respond to it, try to fit it in or try to see how it works with us. I think that our children deserve a more measured approach. Mm -hmm. And I like what you're asking, the question of does the need exist? Mm -hmm. I bet it does, but let's find and out the need it. and then how to meet the need rather than jumping in. It's very well intentioned. There's still space for this program in our state as a nonprofit. Sure. They're doing good work, sure. but it's kind of, it, it's for everybody. It's not for the highest need folks. And we know in Vermont, we have limited funds and we want to get them to the right communities. It doesn't make sense to give free books to kids whose parents can afford hearing books as a supplemental. This has been great. And I think I sort of jotted down some language that maybe we could strike what's there and added to maybe the duties and responsibilities of the council. But Senator Gulick, please. Thank you, Chair. Did I hear you say that you could, this is something that you could look into, this being like a grant program for folks for kids in your role on the Literacy Council? I think that that would be a good place. Both the secretary and I agree that that would be a good place to look at the need right. and how to potentially best meet it for the state in a budget year where there were fewer constraints on on the resources. This year, it seems like you know it's not a program that either the agency of education or the Department of Libraries would bring forward and ask for funds on our own. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Department of Libraries budget, it makes the three percent increase. It's not we wouldn't be bringing this right now. We're trying to keep everything level and keep our services constant and consistent. For the record, I'm really thankful that you're willing to do that work. And I'm re and what a great idea to, to sort of embed it in the literacy council. So I really appreciate you mentioning that. It's great. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to do that type of work. And I have a lot of experience personally with youth services. Um, I've taken so many of the trainings that are offered over the time that I've been a librarian, and I really feel like what we need in Vermont is more access to those trainings for professionals in libraries so that they can get some of that same experience and training. Our department has a goal of offering a series of early childhood literacy classes for youth services librarians later this fall that will do a series of three classes with an expert in early childhood literacy, specifically geared for public libraries. And that would have been done kind of in the side by including a member of the department, either myself or a youth services librarian in the council. We can be working more holistically, thinking about that little one from the minute they start learning to read to we, in the public library world, hand them off to their first elementary school teachers and pre-K kindergarten teachers. So I think having a little bit more of uh, a little bit of time to look at what's available and to really be able to articulate the benefits of the different programs to you all so that you can make informed decisions is sort of good for all of us. Yeah, please so that. Thank you. Yeah. Do we we need to kind of like enshrine that or enshrine not the right, right word, but uh, legislate that into like a formal study or do you think it'll be a natural fit on the literacy council. I'm guessing it's gonna be a natural fit on the literacy yeah. council myself. I don't know what I'm saying for you, Ms. Uh, Del Mayo, but to me, what I'm proposing, we might strike section six through 12, take a version of your language, which would be assess, sort of assess, you could maybe help us with mm -hmm. Smith this, which our ledge council, but we'd love to know the highest needs out there. We're trying to find how do we get books in the hands of um, kids that aren't getting the books right now is maybe the best way for me uh, to say it. And, uh, you know, also what works and doesn't work. In other words, books arriving at the home, 
I remember I used to get subscriptions as a kid. I had the Disney books. They were awesome. I don't know if anybody else had those. But to your point, sometimes they just are on the kitchen counter. Yeah. And so is there something, is there a way for you all to consider not only how they arrive and who receives them, but then what the process is from there? Senator Williams. Well, just want to thank you for your response. I think it's very deliberate, very thought, well thought through. I think we saw this as an opportunity, you know, you know in a world of shrinking uh, financial resources that maybe we can couple over the state program. Uh, I understand what what you're saying, but my my question to you is: so how do we find out which communities need something like this? And is there something we could direct somebody to look into as far as getting that? Because I'd like to see this not just go away and die. I mean, as far as enshrining it, you know, what's in there. Senator, do you look so? I think it's a good program if you need it. Sounds like we maybe don't need it. Well, I think that there may be a need for something. Um, and I think that one of the things that's important is to, rather than in a reactive way, when we see that this isn't, the, it's not a love map for the program, it doesn't exactly meet our needs. And, and the mechanisms of it don't really work that well with our state procurement guidance that we have. Um, I think that by putting some language in the bill about the, the role of the literacy council and looking at programs of this type, it's really a programmatic piece, right? It's identifying that that this committee, members of this committee are interested in learning more about these programs um, and getting a recommendation from the literacy council about them. I do have to say the Idaho, done just some quick research in the past few days and some colleagues from the Idaho State Library were in touch with us. They have a series of programs and they have, it's a lot of different grant opportunities for specific public libraries. And it, to me, it matches a lot what I would dream of. How does that relate to what the people on the Literacy Council know is effective once the kids are in school? I think that there are some different ways that programmatically we could build that out, some recommendations that the Literacy Council could make. Uh, but I, you know, I have my my vantage voice point in libraries is we're trying to build those connections with the library because we know that leads to school success. We're trying to model literacy behaviors with the parents so that the kids are supporting. They're doing things like playing and singing, and that's all supporting the literacy of the child, the success in the end. So really marrying the book giveaway program with the services that are more wraparound at the public library may be more effective. But to your point, Senator, about the expense and the ability to potentially leverage the other funds, then a program like Reading is Fundamental, a federal program that's been around since 1966, how does that work? How can we learn about that? Could we potentially loop in to that program, connect with them, and get some more resources for the state that way. I think the idea is the Literacy Council would be well positioned to evaluate these and some AOE staff and part of the library staff supporting them. So, and I think that, you know, federal federal programs come with special restrictions mm -hmm. and considerations that we'd have to, we'd have to comply with. So, yeah. you know, I don't know what it is. That's true. And I also know that our federal funds from the Institute of Museum and Library Services for the Department of Libraries make up about a third of our budget and supplement pretty much everything we do and are really effective. So we don't want to look away from federal funding sources that are available to us just because there may be, you know, we want to investigate those. What are the challenges? How does it fit with our workflow and with our regular process? But I do think that we need a little bit of time to consider it and come back with recommendations. So this council is going to come down here. I think about three. <clears throat> we'll ask about that strike, striking those sections, and then we'll work on some language that we will ask the literacy council to work on um, related to uh, access to books. Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking. Yeah, no, it's really terrific here. testimony. Would you mind um, if you're leaving? Uh, maybe before you go, just send a little blurb to Ledge Council to mm -hmm. think about that might meet your needs. Um, and then I think I'm you're talking about 220 again, so we I are. cannot be leaving. I'm okay, sit over there and type five. Beautiful, okay. okay, thank you. Thanks. All right, so that 
is getting close to finish being finished. Um, Mr. Nichols, real important. Good afternoon, everyone. For the record, Jay Nichols, Executive Director of the Law Principals Association. Uh, submitted written testimony already talking about Senate Prop 304 changes to career and technical education. First, I want to thank the committee for taking up this important work. Um, I'm going to just look at my notes, but kind of skim through them unless you ask any questions you might have. CP members, uh, RBPA members, uh, almost without exception, occasionally there might be one member that's one CTE director that's not a member, mm -hmm. but usually almost everybody is. We also give out a CTE award over here for the CTE director of the year, which is something the BPA financially sponsors. So they're very important to us. Uh, also, as a superintendent, um, I had a career center. That's the Cole Hollow Career Center. And uh, that sent kids from the Eastern District to that school. So I've had a lot of opportunities to work with CTEs. One of the things we're talking about here, and Senator Campion and I talked about this a little bit um, offline prior to the testimony starting, is that it looks like we want to work on the funding part before the independent governance part. And I think that's okay. Um, just want to mention that given the current funding realities, it's going to be real thoughtful about that and try to look at the whole picture of what we're spending education fund monies on and try to find ways to make it as comprehensive as possible so that we're similar to the conversation you just had about the reading program. So you're making sure you're not duplicating and being redundant in areas. Yeah, no, thank you for that. I think for me, the um, the agency is working on some financial stuff. I saw that, and we yeah. and I, we support that concept. Yeah, I've seen details. But we haven't seen it. You know, we haven't yeah. seen the details. Conceptually, up. though, you know, okay. we, we you know, they talked about ed funding coming off the top and block grant type of model. You know, I fully support that. Yeah, I've seen the details, but. We want to get to a system where it's it's not seen as competitive between high schools sending kids and school districts sending kids to a career center. And so are there reasons not to send a kid there? Um, and so, you know, one of the things I put in my testimony, I think a great example of this is I can remember a situation where we had a young lady who wanted to be a nurse and she wanted to take medical medical careers, but her guidance counselor told her she should really take the AP biology and she really wanted to take both. Mm. And it could not happen. Now, to be honest, we did make it happen, mm -hmm. but not in schedule. We actually had a teacher who was willing to do like a uh, independent study with her for AP biology. Mm -hmm. That was just out of the goodness of his heart. He wasn't getting paid anything extra to do it. Gave extra time to help mm -hmm. to, to help this kid out. Mm -hmm. But you know, if the distance, and this was a kid who went to Eastburg High School, mm -hmm. so for her, the career center was across the street. You know, we have kids that are on buses for 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes going to a career center. So it's not as easy as just trying to align bell schedules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, I, I, I talk a little bit in here about, you know, the disadvantages of small schools. You can read about that. We actually agree with the concepts around ninth and 10th graders and middle school students. Just want you to know that the devil's in the details there too. Um, I talked to one CD, CD director who has over, I think close to two dozen schools that send to that career center. And their comments were along the lines of, well, if the kids came, if we set that up, where there's a field trip for the sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders each year, my kids would miss so much school because they'd be being interrupted all the time. Now, I think the intent is to have them come once during their middle school experience. If that's mm -hmm. the case, I think we should do everything we can to try to make that occur. And I think that's both the sending schools and receiving tech centers would be interested in that. The other big thing is ninth and tenth graders. You know, just so you know, as a committee, the need is really out there. Yeah. We have some ninth and tenth graders walk into high schools. They would benefit so much from having a career center experience. Some of those kids, they are trying to survive to get to eleventh grade so they can be at a CTE center, and and are much more likely to be successful if you get them there earlier. So they're trying to stick around for as long as they can. And so are their principals and their and their yeah. special ed. Uh, folks yeah. and teachers just trying to help them get through. I was talking to a young man the other day who's a love grader this year who said, uh, Beowulf almost killed him. Yeah. I just hated school so much. I mean, I was thinking about dropping out of school because I had to study Beowulf. It's got no relevance to my life whatsoever. 
And well, you and I disagree with that. Well, <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe. I'm a big Mark Twain fan myself. That's a good joke. Um, so anyway, just those thoughts. I did mention on sections four and five, the AOE has said that the Ogden Black Pellet and Associates uh, report was unrealistic in timeline around policy. That, you know, that AP report, I think that we should be careful about that. Make sure that the AOE has time to come up with a model policy if we're going to go that route and that the schools have time to implement it. Many of our school boards take July off. That's just the reality. Yeah. And typically, every place I've been a superintendent, there were two full public warnings to discuss new policy. And we've come to the situation now a lot in Vermont where boards might only meet once a month, especially in like August. So you could have an August meeting and now school starts, and you've only had one chance to really talk about whether or not I can pass that policy. And then if okay, what number are you on a certain number right now? Are you speaking to I'm speaking to sections uh section I'm jumping around to make it quicker. Section four and five. Okay. So Jay, if you don't mind, so what are the ones that you would really want us to focus on in the next few days, couple of weeks, or you know, week and a half, editing this up and getting it moving, knowing that the house would work on it? I would give some flexibility on the policy date line. Okay. I would not. I would follow the lead of the agency of education. Yeah. And they just think reasonable. is that in here somewhere? It says I think August and September are called for. Right. No, in your testimony. Yes. 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 Can you point me to that? Just so. Yes. I it's uh. With. Sections four and five. Great. Okay, great. Then in section six, the only thing I wanted to say there was that we fully support that any state construction aid program should include the CTE centers. Yeah. If anything, if I had my way, we would build, you know, 15 or 20 brand new centers that were really state of the art. Um, I mentioned the testifying, uh, mentioning moving back to the Commission of Education. Uh, in the CT oversight, but regardless of that, that happens or not, I think moving it to the secretary or commissioner makes sense. Our state board doesn't have the resources, the legal support, or any of those things. Yeah. It really should be an obligation of the department or the agency of education. So what section is that? That is section seven. Great. Okay. I think we're with that. Good. Um, section eight is, is similar. Great. Section nine. We fully support the articulation agreements. I did mention in there that earning college credits and training certifications while in high school has been demonstrated to increase successful economic outcomes for students throughout their lives. So if anything, I'd like to see us find ways to increase that. And then my last little tidbit is we need a statewide school calendar. Yeah, we just do. Um, I talked to tech center directors who say some kids miss as many as 20 days because of something happening at the home school. Now, it might be a different calendar. It might be a field trip. That, so I had to go on a field trip with my physics class, so I got to miss forestry yeah. because, because field trip's gone all day. And I just I do think if we could come up with a common calendar across the state, nobody wants to do it. Uh, I'll find a, a quick little story. We were sitting in as trustees, and that coach, a friend of mine, and I were pushing a statewide calendar. Uh, with the trustees and Mary Moran, so we never had a long time. Yeah. Well, great respect for her. Well, mentioned me when I was a young yeah. superintendent. Yeah. Very good. And she said, Jay, we all agree you're absolutely right as long as it's a rubble count. Mm -hmm. And that ended the whole conversation. Um, so I, at some well, point, she was fine as long as it's a rubble count. As long as it was a rubble county count, we were all going to use. Uh -huh. And I think that's the sun that's out there. I'd love to see you get four or five people in a room and say, make a calendar, and then mm -hmm. somebody have the courage to adopt it. And if it's a good calendar that's research-based to support student learning, in two or three years, people are going to just be used to it. It's just, just you know, over that big hump. So, and those of you that know me know I'm one of the people that took all the arrows the last time we tried this. The balloon in public meetings, it was really yeah, interesting. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Jeannie Collins, myself, and Elaine Pickney. So I do not want to be the face of it. But I think if you're going to really have a strong system, yeah, having Senator Campion be the face of it. Right, right, right. Right. Great idea, Senator Gould, right. and I support that fully out to the DPA. <laughs> Uh, subject to any questions, that's the main highlights, Senator. Okay. You ask me to head off. Um, so I will, so we will look at those sections four through nine. Okay. And those are your priorities. Yes. If you've got and then on the house side, question, send me a text and I'll yeah. respond immediately. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. But that I appreciate you really guys working on this. Us. This is yeah. really important for yeah. a lot of kids. Senator Dewitt. No, no, no. I just was going like this because I saw Senator Weeks is here. Actually. Oh, so, good. I wasn't expecting him today, so. Same, Same way. Time. 
No, I've got something, but I'm not going to say it. Okay. Well, a uh, statewide calendar? Uh, CTE and uh, traditional calendar. Uh -huh. Two separate calendars? One? No, I, no, I, I think we just, we're, we're brain locked because we've got the school year. CTE's got to go all Agreed. year long. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. they can go all into the workforce. Yeah. And, I, you know, that's a bridge too far right now. But I don't think it but it's hard because when you're in a when you're in the system, it's like you folks are in the system yeah. here. It's hard to think outside right. the system. I'm, yeah, I'm the expert in it. You gotta you gotta go say how would we design this so we could com completely blow it up and, and take a we look at it. we looked at a calendar that was eight weeks of school, mm -hmm. two weeks of like a break for teachers except those that wanted to work, and one one week of that was to call back any kids that need extra support. Mm -hmm. The other week was vacation, and July was going to be summer vacation. And that was going to be essentially going to be the calendar. And places like Denver did it for their schools. A lot of places have done it. And I've seen lots of success and lots of support for it. And parents and teachers are all, nobody wants to do it for, until the second or third year. And everybody's like, oh, this is much more humane. This, kids are learning. Anyway, sorry, that was in. I my, did like your football. calendar, by the way, when you guys proposed it. Now I'm remembering. I thought it was great. And when I taught in Germany, we had about a month off in the summer. Yeah. And we had two or three weeks at Christmas, yep. a couple weeks in the spring. So yep. you had these really great, and as a teacher, you know, you could feel the- the, the Human. Yeah, <laughs> it, the break was essential to just, you know, feeling healthy and well-balanced. Same and, for the kids. And and I mean, it's better for the kids. It just mm -hmm. is better for the kids. We know that reading scores and the reading abilities go down in the summer. We talk about a 0.23 off. deviation yeah. of lost learning yeah. on average over the summer. And we yeah. know that the deviation is much higher for kids that are in poverty or in yeah. historically marginalized populations. Yeah. Because they're not going to museums during the summer. They're not getting lost opportunities. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. All right. What? I just, I just I just think we're we're mind locked into the traditional method of school weeks. You know why that school year started, right? What's that? You know why that school year started, right? No. It's not because of agriculture. That's the common refrain. That kind of helped it continue. It really started because a lot of wealthy people in the cities thought it was too hot in the city right. to have their kids go to school. Yeah. They went on vacation, so the schools closed during vacations. Mm -hmm. And then later on it became an agriculture. Everybody said, well, it's because of Crop system. I, I was born on the farm. You know, that had nothing to do with crops. So that was an That was kind of how it all developed. It really had a lot to do with places like Boston, New York City, that being too hot, and, and the families, the families would mean going to you know Cape Cod and places like that to vacation. That's a big argument now. Is summer camp? Yeah. yeah. Kids who go to summer camp. Yeah, that's and, good. Yeah. And working. Yeah. Also. It's true. That's a, that's a concern. Just one point. I mean, I'm curious how many kids would be less interested in CTE if they found out they weren't going to have a summer vacation, they went to CTE. I, I wanted to be all kids, not just CTE kids. Oh, okay. I want yeah. a whole calendar, you know, and not just CTE right. calendar. Oh, right. and, and, and and you still have a summer break. It's just that it's four weeks instead of, what, what do we have now? Eight, seven, eight. Or seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe remind me, I'll go, I'll go along with We'll see you in just a second. <laughs> Anything else for me? Thank you all very much. Appreciate your work on this, really. It is important. Mr. Anderson, uh, come on up, Jax. It's uh, oh. I just don't want to close them off. But we, how long did we have? Right. We just had a new certificate. Right, but how for one hour? You just check to see how his availability. Yeah. I just we can't uh, use him, so we can move the library. No, I just want to. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, for the record, Jeff Hannon from on the A, and I will start in at where you all ended on the school calendar because mm -hmm. that is a tough subject. I'm well aware. It was around when it was discussed I don't know, more than a decade ago. Uh, I will tell you that some teachers uh, are thrilled with the calendar idea and others uh, were not. And uh, it was one of the few times I've seen teachers um, gnashing of teeth, crying, all of the above on an issue. Uh, so I, I wish you, I understand it's entrenched in the thinking. I, I understand that, but it is uh, it is entrenched in that thinking. So I wish you luck, and I understand Senator Campion will be taking the lead on that. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And so I, I support that. I don't aspect. remember. It, you know, I remember it coming up about 12, 13 years ago, but it hasn't really right. surfaced much again. No, that's about right. No, that's right. Um, 
and it's it's a difficult conversation. I yeah. Why. So, um, excuse me, Excuse me. Excuse me. See, we're so happy you're here. Yeah. It well, we really are. Health and welfare almost postponed their meetings. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Please. So anyway, so yeah. I uh, I wish you well on the, the school calendar. And and there is a BOCES bill being discussed today or uh, right now in the House Education Committee. Yes, that's what I and heard. And maybe uh, that may also provide you an opportunity to have discussions about the school mm -hmm. calendar. It's similar to the CDE issue. Uh, and maybe maybe this is the year. I don't know, uh, but that may be another vehicle to get out of the entrenched thinking. This, yeah. this, this whether it was agrarian or or vacation, I don't know. And before you start, I just want to know, Mr. Anderson, how long do we have you for? Mr. Bannon just started. How long can you? I can come back in ten minutes, and you can have me for five or ten, if that works. Okay, can you be that quick, Jeff? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Five minutes. Well, it depends on. Yes. I can. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, anyways, so oh, as a general matter, in, in introduction, we certainly support CTEs. We think they're a valuable component of the education system for many students who really, uh, as Jay pointed out, want and need that CTE to keep them engaged in school. And it's a, it's a really vital uh, piece of the education system for, for folks. So, uh, that we do support. Um, and it's uh, it's critically important and necessary uh, for the school system. So we, we definitely support it. Uh, Jay mentioned the changing the funding system, um, and I think there's a lot being changed right now, and that does give me pause and concern yeah. that we're changing too much, too fast. And uh, you know, as a scientist, you want to change one lever uh, and then examine the results, and then change another lever, lever and, and examine those results. Here we're changing a lot right now. I think this might be uh, a bit too much uh, to say that, but but you are talking about funding, we, and it is a big conversation in the building, obviously, and should be. Um, and so that is um, of critical importance to you all and to us. Uh, and I'll also say that uh, not directly related to CTEs, but it does it is reminiscent of there's a section in four at H four eighty three that talked about, that's I think on your wall from the house from last session, that talked about um, making sure that public schools, excuse me, the public system is not charged more to send a child to a private school uh, than what is the announced tuition for the private school. So that was in the context of 483, it was, it was done um, I think in two places, so the one where it was schools out of state but either way, the, the concept is we don't want private schools charging the education fund a greater amount than what they're charging their private pay parents. And that is happening. And so I think in the context of funding here, um, while we talk about CTE, I don't know that it's happening here at CTE. I don't think CTEs, I don't think that it is. But it did remind me of that policy decision that you, you have before you that we could, I think, certainly all agree that we ought not to be charging the public, uh, the education fund more than what private paid parents are. What are you working off of? Just do you have, did you give us testimony? I just want to make sure. I, I, have, I, have, I, know that I do not have written testimony. Okay. okay. Um, and I'm happy to give you something afterwards if you'd like. Yeah, uh, just um, something would, would be great. Okay. Because we are getting close to marking this up and moving this. Okay. And, you know, the sections that Jay focused on were really sections four through nine, recognizing that right. the house is going to get them. And so I'd say, given that we've, have you know, eight days before crossover, whatever you really want us to dig okay. into. You know. So on, on the policy front, on, yeah. on uh, uh, the rulemaking, excuse me, on the, on the policy that schools, I think uh, Chad and Susie Glowski at the School Board Association, uh, they've got a lot of the authority already. I don't know that you need it, but you certainly should hear from VSBA. Okay, again, um, you're not looking at Jay's, at Jay's, you're just talking off. I'm, I'm talking okay. about my notes. Okay. I don't know if okay. what Jay. Okay. I, I have not read Jay's, okay. I promise you. Yeah, Jay. We have not had <laughs> Jay's in the very full So I think you should hear from VSBA about the policy uh, requirements of them. Um, I, the, certainly the CTEs uh, reporting to this no longer to the Secretary of Ed versus the State Board of Education. Uh, in concept, yes, I agree with it. 
Uh, what we do think is important is that uh, we go back to a commissioner of education, have a discussion, um, and then give that commissioner and the AOE resources with which to rule make this in this area. So I know we, we have like eight days. I see. You know what I mean? So I just I really want to be realistic here. We're not talking about reworking the, the agency right now. We're just talking about the fair enough. Uh, this I, I'm, I'm, I'm great. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as for state aid, uh, it was on the school construction task force. I know we did talk about CTEs. Yep. I haven't really looked at that that report, but certainly CTEs are deserving uh, of public funds when they're serving the public good. So I think that we agree in concept that that ought to be uh, looked at. I know, again, House Education is looking deeply into yep. school construction. This may be a better piece for that. So I don't know if you want to keep it in there. They're taking up a more comprehensive uh, approach to school construction at large, and it just it's such a go over there. Um, with that, I'll stop. That I mean, I did already talk about school calendar and uh, started with that. And I, I you could type those up and get them to us today. Right. That would be great. Sure. Like we're going to move forward and try to move it on Friday. Okay. And as for the the HC of Education's piece on uh, block grant, I too look forward to seeing their written testimony. Yeah. I don't know when that's coming. I think it's going to be tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I think that's really important. As a general matter, I'm concerned a little bit about giving CTEs a block grant and things can change year to year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that might negatively affect students about what services we can provide them if you're giving them a, a sort of a year old block grant and things do change. So that's a concern. I'm interested to see what they have to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What, what section is the block grant? Uh, it's not a section. Um, they're going to bring in. They're going to introduce language, I guess. Okay. About a block grant. All right. Yeah. I'm very confused because I thought that Secretary Boucher at one point said, "Let's focus on policy now and let's do finance like right. next later." You're right. And I'm just looking at her policy. testimony where she says. Uh, Suggested yeah, change the language. Finance first and then that's what, that's yeah, I mean, she, oh, yeah, oh. she seems to want to do it, but that will be left to us. We'll see what they say tomorrow in terms of their testimony and whether or not it's too complicated for us to jump in right now or okay. or what. We just need to move something. So here and what yeah, I don't know. We're interested in what she has to say. Yeah. So. The only bills we're getting from the House, at least in the conversation I had with uh, a couple of the reps from that committee yesterday, school construction, miscellaneous ed. And there was one more postseason. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And I think they're trying to move that one this week. Yeah. Look, there's yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. some construction may wait. They wait. It's a lot of the break. Yeah. It's a bigger. Please. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, if, if you're willing, uh, the comment of, the comment about uh, private schools charging more for tuition students. Can you, in your written testimony, not here, the survey, can you, can you back that up with short of, the school, this. I can't. My district. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. You can talk to people. The greater role. She's right in here. We'll have it. Invest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can send it to morning. That would be great. Yeah. You can grab it. Would you let Mr. Tucker in as you depart? I will do so. Maybe we pass you don't the have to. I didn't say that. I've been kicked out. Oh, it's oh, so not the door. Uh, 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 I knew he was on his way. I knew he was on his way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Where, where Just keep that door? open. Should be out in the hall. He's not. Yeah. You'll find him. Uh, these were our decision points for 220, the library. Why doesn't everybody take a look at them if you didn't have a chance to look at them over the weekend? Um, keeping in mind, that uh, dangerous weapons, firearms, yeah. public libraries have been yanked, and that will go to House Judiciary to work on that issue. And decide whether or not to take it up. So leaves us with confidentiality, salt in position, governance, Department of Authority, uh, and appropriations. Yeah. Okay. Is that more of no, not tomorrow, but I'd like to decide these, you know, at least move yeah, yeah. forward with these when Tucker comes in, see where we can get on and so we get out the senior. Are we still on? We are still on. Yeah. We're waiting for Tucker. Take out the weapons. 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 Take uh, I'll, 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 why don't you take us off so we don't? Yeah. Welcome back to Senate Education. Mr. Anderson, 
1.1 is the same minus the firearm regulation pieces. I believe that the firearm pieces are still in 1.1. It was okay. from last week before you had your conversation with uh, Eric Fitzpatrick. Great. Right. So I'm going to hold off. We're going to work right from our decision points for and see what direction we can give you. Um, let's do the least controversial or some of the least controversial first. So we've pulled number three, of course. Um, Senator Weeks, have you had a chance to talk? Have the two of you worked together on um, diversity language to include religion and political identity? We have not. We have not. Okay. So maybe since we got a move, you guys could do that yeah. and we can look at it tomorrow. Um, back at the top, library, okay, number two, library consultant positions, one at AOE, two at the Department of Libraries, the working group only recommended restoring the one LP position at AOE. We've heard testimony and we have Catherine here, Ms. Del Neo. The bill asks for one person at the Agency of Education to work on library issues and two at the Department of Libraries. Say something about that, would you? Um, well, I, uh, Catherine Delnow, State Librarian, I did not draft the bill. So I right. think that my understanding of the bill as it was drafted is that with some of the additional work that was officially proposed, that the the drafter of the drafters of the bill thought that there would be a need for positions in the department. Uh, with the changes, the way that the bill stands right now, we've integrated a lot of that work into our regular activities, not undergoing rulemaking, for example, but doing some general guidelines. So uh, again, the department's position the whole time has been that we did not ask for these two positions in our department. And while my colleague from AOE left the room, I don't believe that AOE asked for that position. And I don't know that AOE's weighed in on it. Maybe, yes. I think the AOE position really came to us from the BL, BSLA, the Vermont School Libraries Association, and the school librarians across the state who really, really want that position. Maybe, what do we think? Um, Senator Hewlett, do you recall anything else related to their need for that position? Anything else uh, other than what you mean, why they feel yeah. they need it? Yeah. I, I, think I, I think I mentioned last week that a lot of school librarians are living in sort of a little, very isolated bubble because they're the only one in the school. Sometimes they're the only half time one in the school and they just don't, you know, there's no one for them to collaborate with, no one for them to get information from, and when they don't have someone, when they don't have a point person in the AOE, I think they feel very sort of isolated and alone, and um, luckily there is the Vermont School Libraries Association, which is helpful, but still that's just a group of librarians, that's not necessarily a body that has any kind of authority or anything, so I think that's where that's coming from. And we could always put it in, recognizing that anything could happen down the hall. But reality is, down the hall is going to ask us, do we believe this is your top priority for the Agency of Education? We're adding a full-time person to literacy. Would our next decision be to add a full-time person to libraries? Or would we use it for enforcement issues? Would we use it for other sort of on-the-ground folks to go into schools. One of the things I talked to a couple of reps about yesterday, could we ever get to the point where there's an AOE person in every county? You know, could we, you know, so schools, so people really have somebody like Fish and Wildlife have people all over the state. It's an on the ground job in some way. I don't know if this is where my top priority would be personally. I'm not saying it's not a good idea, but I just, there's a lot of need in schools, yeah. I recognize that, I just, if I can, yeah, I'll just accept uh, for uh, Senator Hewitt's uh, comment. Um, I know it's different organizations. Why couldn't a school librarian be working with the department of libraries? You know, as far as like a, you know, reach out. Um, 
I, right now, the Department of Libraries has one youth services consultant, and uh, their work encompasses some support for school libraries, but also all of the support for youth librarians at all of the public libraries throughout the state. Um, the needs that were articulated in the, by the working group members were more around curricular support, which is really outside the scope of what the department's usually been providing them with. And um, we we have supported them to a degree, but it's my sense from what we heard in testimony um, when the VISLA folks were present at the very beginning of the session was that they would like additional support within the agency itself. There is some communication between the department and the agency, uh, but the, the specific needs of school librarians in Vermont, I can speak to a lot less well than I can speak to the public librarians needs, for example. Our, our department has been very focused on public library support for statute. And you can see in statute, we're not really as focused towards school libraries. You know, my only other comment, if I if I may, no. uh, is would be that if there was a way to sort of uh, uh, combine an AOE library position with literacy, and I don't know what that would look like, but it seems like literacy is a priority. We are hoping to add that position to the permanent position to the AOE around literacy. But if, if this person could. I don't know, manage, I, I, I don't, I can't get to sort of think about what that would look like, but it seems like it would be um, really beneficial to have more literacy focus. But you're not talking about the position, you're talking in addition to the position we already have in there, right? Yeah, you so like this AOE library position so could also have a focus on- but Well, even the other literacy position. Right. In, a, in my former profession, it, it used to be a uh, uh, saying that, you know, safety is everybody's business. But when everybody's looking at it, nobody in particular is. So to have somebody dedicated to uh, the connection between libraries and literacy, I think is, it would be worth the money. It would be a, a pretty heavy lift for one person. But, you know, the idea of one in each county would be ideal. We just don't have the same. Well, for that, I was thinking more of, uh, I don't think, I could be wrong, you know, we people get to schools like they should. But we know when there's a, a river overflowing or there's a release of chemicals, like fish, everybody's there. And usually, a lot of times, these are local people. Right. So if the agency did have people that were in every county that were on the ground, hey, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z just to see what's going on. We all saw the news about test scores again coming out. How can we get a sense of, and it sort of be there to help people, you know what I mean? Not have to travel away from people because I just don't think it has as much. What do you want to say, Archie? Put in one position. Yeah. I think uh, I do like the sounds of having this sort of emerge between the person who's doing literacy and libraries. Uh, but there's also the point that it could be a heavy lift for one single person. So, I mean, I, I guess I'm curious as to how much or how heavy would that lift be and whether it's feasible or if it's, you know, if it would just be challenging but doable. Uh, and also to your point earlier on uh, you know, regarding different positions that we're going to be asking for, um, yeah, your point's well taken about the other positions as well. So. You keep it out for now, the positions out, and then if anybody wants to make a big case for them to go in, happy to do amendments, you know, as a committee, like come in and say, all right, here's some working language. I definitely want this person to end. Have, have something, but for now, just to move on, because I know you've got other stuff going on. Uh, so, Library record confidentiality, lowering the age from 16 to 12. Who else do people want to hear from on this? I think the majority might be okay with this, but I, it, people still want to hear from other people on this. I don't want to shut off debate. Say, ah, oh, this is... I'm fine, but... I'm fine. Right, right. But I, I want to make sure... 
you've heard from the people that you might want to hear from on this or not. Or from, okay. So I can go. Okay. Is there anybody you want to hear from that would make the case to keep it 16? Uh, off hand, no. Okay. If you think of anyone, sure. yeah, let me know. Okay. So we'll do it for now and then we'll find out a little more testimony. So then, of course, three dangerous weapons. Library governance, whether to include some language clause that would clarify the level of funding that we discussed. I think this made sense. Um, can you bring us back to this? Sure. So to bring you back to that section of the bill, the underlying requirement in law just states that a municipality annually shall appropriate funds for the maintenance, increase, and care. Mm -hmm. But there was no qualifier around what that appropriation had to be. So in the bill as introduced, there was a standard set that was three words, insufficient amounts. Yeah. And in draft 1.1 of the committee's amendment, that has been taken out and reverted to the underlying law, which just requires an appropriation for the care, maintenance, and increase. That's the underlying law. That yeah. is current law, yes. Yeah, because we couldn't determine what's sufficient, what does that, yeah. Right. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. the preceding subsection before that, which concerns the actual establishment of a public library by a municipality requires appropriations necessary for the uh, construction and maintenance of the library. So that was one of the things that I pointed out is that you have the necessary standard and proceeding subsection, but it's not being for the ongoing appropriations. Thank you. Sounds like we're in Good spot with that. We won't go back to the bill draft. Okay, and then appropriations. Uh, without the positions, it's a matter of whether there should be an appropriation for any duties that to the Department of Libraries has under the bill's terms. The primary, the bulk of the appropriation was for the positions. And then there was 200. $75,000 to the department to support the programs and services established by the Act. So with repeat that again, 275000 for programs and services. Um, many, many of those particularly with a few of the sections pulled out and, um, may not be as well known. Was the 278 included those three positions? The 275,000 was standalone. Oh, okay. There was 225,000 to the Department for the Positions, and then 112,500 to the Agency of Education. And then that subdivision one in section 14 was just to support programs and services required by the Act. Sorry. I know you said that twice. Um, I just, what, what? I don't. What can you guys piece out, parse out what programs would be two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars? You still know? Can you weigh in on this? Okay, can you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Please, Ms. Still now. Sorry. Um, I I can weigh in just to say that the department didn't request this. That yeah. we're comfortable with the budget that we proposed. That's in the governor's budget request. I did have one area that I had spoken to you about that um, I'm wondering. If that you could consider, which was removing an existing piece of statute um, that is in in statute now. Um, I think it's in section 606. It says that the department is shall be the primary access point for state information. And we are not that. And I'm wondering if we're touching statute right now, could we remove that, that kind of old line from maybe 30 years ago? Repeat it, please. The department shall be the primary access point for state information. It's part of our um, other duties and functions of the department, which I think is section 606 of chapter 22. It's and how, the would last change, how would this change? What does this It about? wouldn't change our work, but it would not say that we're doing work we're not doing. If that makes any sense. The way that this reads, our understanding is that anything that's on the website for the entire state of Vermont 
people would look at this and logically think we have vetted it, we have organized it. No one has come to us for help with their information architecture or the content of the fish and wildlife Nobody, nobody's coming to us for state information in this way. And also with the advent of um, people calling 211, we're not the primary point of information for telephone calls, email calls, the state of Vermont, or the online information. So uh, I'm happy to still provide advice and counsel in the second half of that sentence about internet state information policy. What page line are you on? Um, well, this wasn't in the bill, but I had asked you about it during my earlier testimony. If we could, add, if we could add removing, repealing that part from statute. Go ahead. Were you going to say something? It's it's basically just a cleanup because we haven't done this work in, in our weeks. many years. So I apologize. I'm still on the highway moving 75 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you say? To remove that language from current statute. Okay, gotcha. Yes, to align with our actual work and to ensure that people don't think the department has vetted all of the information that's on the state's website. So add language to this bill that would remove language from statute. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, can we do that? Yeah. Um, can I ask, can we go back to the appropriations real quick? Um, so, and correct me if I'm wrong with my understanding, but so on page 10, that section one and two, for the 275 and the 225, those are not in the recommended budget. Is, is that right? And, but the 112 is in the recommended budget. None of the appropriations listed in this draft of the bill are in the governor's recommended budget, okay. to my knowledge. And so, Oh, okay, well, that clarifies that. So thank you. And to offer some, can't speak to why this figure was chosen. Mm -hmm. Can't tell you why it was put in here, which is that the work working group had originally recommended a series of new programs that the department might initiate at the discretionary level, including things like increasing libraries at the Department of Corrections facilities and things like that, many of them are not in the bill. It, so this was a placeholder, so to speak, in case those decisions were made down the line. Thank you. So the next graph, we've got, just to make sure we're on the same page, library confidentiality, number one, it will be lowered in the next graph. Library consultant positions for now, out, dangerous weapons, we know is they're out. Library governance, uh, we're re returning to the original uh, statute. Department authority is Senator Weeks in bring language tomorrow. And then the appropriations. I mean, I, I guess maybe take them out and we'll add them when we assess what the needs are. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, please. So going back to the library governance, it's already in the statute. Why repeat it? Well, we're not going to. We're not we're repeating it right now. We're just it, yeah. Yes. And then draft one point one, that clause in the bill is introduced to the party that there are technical corrections in those sections. The original bill that? had some different language. Yes, so we I remember all that. that. Yeah. And so we're just returning to that. There will still be um paragraph in the in the bill, yes, regarding governance, and what does it say different from what the statute already says? Uh, in addition to some technical corrections, there are conforming amendments around things like the authority over the library director to make sure it's okay. consistent. Okay, okay. Oh, here, I thought it was something. Yeah, happy to connect. Oh, I thought it was appropriation specific. Sorry. Thank you. Go ahead. I may not, I may be we or yeah. request to be. Leave the AOE position in and, and let probes make a decision. I I love the way Senator Williams described it as a someone who would connect literacy to libraries. I just think that's that was such a good way of putting it, elegant solution. Um I just don't want them to make the decision. I want us to make the decision. This is you know the policy. I want us to either say this is the biggest priority for us 
or not. I just don't want to send it down there and be lukewarm at all. You know what I mean? So given the other possibilities, uh, as long as this committee believes that a 50-50 position is more important than any other positions in AOE, I just don't want to send it down and be like, well, yeah. we didn't really, or we're going to leave to you. You know what I mean. Yeah, please. Are we going to be having a list of an appropriations requests that yeah. we're going to be sending down and then yeah. we'll do a prioritization? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I just don't want us to be... Okay. I mean, for me, again, I would rather have somebody who just works on that. Or, you know, I, yeah, but, but then again, I'm sort of also just grasping. You know, just right, as in, right. So if this is the need, if this is a half literacy, half supporting well, school votes. I, I just, I think you and I talked before on many occasions doing sort of like an audit of the AOE. It's so hard for me to even begin to think about what positions we would add or take away, but mostly add without knowing exactly who's there doing what. Mm -hmm. And I have looked on their page many times and they have like this, they have a, like, it looks like a family tree almost of who's doing what, but it's still- It is a family tree. Yeah, it's like, yeah, but it's, it doesn't really help me understand exactly who's doing what. Yeah. And so to your point, I love the idea of having people locally, but what would that look like? Is that something that, yeah. we're not gonna do that oh, this year, yeah. are we? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, a responsibility if we if we put in a priority for we, number we, one we, number so two we put in the next draft well, it should be, it should and, be and directed that some somebody's gonna be responsible and and specifically what their job is it's like a position description you know if we put it in and AOE says well actually what we really need is this that could also give us some information uh, you mind if we just think about it for now? Sure. The next draft, we won't have it in. Uh, we'll get the appropriations for now. And then next draft, we'll have some of these conversations with Jan. Fantastic. I think I have what I need. Thank you Thanks. all very much. Thank you. We'll be here a little later. Like, uh, much later in the afternoon. Yes. Good morning. And I'm available for any tomorrow. I'll follow up by email. Let you know times this afternoon and tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks a million. So you'll just send us a new draft. Statue. Yeah. We'll go through okay. it with you. We'll find some time. Great. Tucker, not Tucker, you're you. He calls me weak, so. Uh oh. Yeah, we're going to take 15 That's minutes. 15 minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Senate Education. Hey, Ms. Myers, thanks so much for joining us, uh, you know, we're trying to move some bills and we have not heard yet from all of you. Um, I do see some testimony in our files. We just need to uh, understand your thoughts on 304. So please uh, go for it. Great, thank you for having me. Um, for the record, Chelsea Myers, Associate Executive Director at the Vermont Superintendents Association. Thank you for inviting testimony on career and technical education. In response to the study on the funding and governance of career technical education in Vermont, otherwise known as the APA report, and its anticipated legislative co consideration, VSA held two stakeholder feedback meetings in late 2023. The group consisted of 11 superintendents, including three technical center superintendent directors and representatives from the VPA and the VSBA. Several core themes emerged from the first meeting, including many recommendations outlined in the APA report relate more generally to topics in pre-K through 12 education and should not be discussed in isolation from the overall delivery system. Number two, coordination and collaboration between entities to ensure equity, Quality and efficiency is essential. This includes with the higher education system. Number three, there is a need for a system that does not create tension or competition between schools and instead focuses on flexibility and accessibility. Number four, expansion requires additional attention to all of the barriers discussed throughout the APA report, including but not limited to facilities, transportation, and financial and human resources. And number five, as a lever of economic growth in Vermont, any changes to career and technical education should be grounded in a clear vision, both statewide and in local communities. So for the sections one and 
two on funding. Um, developing a non-competitive funding mechanism for CTE was a shared value expressed at the feedback, feedback session from all parties. DSA will await forthcoming information from the Agency of Education on their proposed block funding and transition mechanism. Given the significant pressures on the education fund, the details of any shifts in the funding structure will be tremendously important. They should be thoughtfully discussed and considered within the full context of the education delivery system. Any changes in funding should not leave school districts or CTE centers with fewer resources. Within changes to the funding mechanism, there needs to be an acknowledgement that the sending LEAs do still provide services for students who attend CTE programs. In section three, expanded access, as you learned from VACTED in their testimony on February 23rd, requiring an annual visit for all grades six through eight students would be immensely challenging to coordinate and implement. While career exploration in earlier grades is important, there should be flexibility in how this can be accomplished in school districts and CTE centers, with recognition of current capacity limitations and workforce shortages. Adding opportunities to the middle grade should not detract from the day-to-day -day CTE program offered to secondary students. In regards to providing genuine opportunities for students in grades 9 and 10, it is unclear what genuine means in this context, especially within the context of reported wait lists for programs, staff shortages, and facility limitations. In Section 4 and 5, um, it talks about a com comprehensive career development policy. VSA recommends hearing testimony from VSBA as it relates to school board policy. The bill's current draft does not clearly delineate the model policy and the implementation plan. Procedures are also mentioned further in the section, all different types of documents that guide school districts or um, frameworks. The model policy and implementation plan should be clearly articulated and aligned with the role of school board policy compared to the other do guiding documents mentioned within the bill. Um, school construction aid, VSA, VSA definitely agrees with this section um, within the context of the overall um, concerns about school construction aid for the public education system. Section 7, oversight, um, VSA did not discuss this recommendation in its feedback sessions. With that said, whichever entity is responsible for oversight should have the capacity to do so effectively and towards a shared vision of an effective public school delivery system. I believe in committee, you talked a little bit about um, kind of the political imp implications of oversight in either group. Um, any oversight should be met with a commensurate level of support for the field from the AOE. VSA recognizes the need for an update to the rules. Regardless of the body undertaking an update to the rules, the process should include substantial collaboration with the field. Post-secondary program alignment, superintendents in the feedback session recognize a need for better alignment between CTE centers and higher education institutions to the greatest extent possible. There were some reports that students pursue opportunities in other states instead of repeating coursework required by Vermont's post-secondary institutions. A seamless secondary to post-secondary to career pathway is critical for Vermont's ec economic future. Vermont must do what it can to both attract and retain a skilled workforce. Thank you. Yeah, Senator Dewitt. Hey, Chelsea, thanks for that testimony. I was just curious about uh, section three, which I think we've heard now multiple times that it's a little, maybe a little bit problematic, but what do you recommend there uh, in terms of the career exploration for middle school kids for six to eight? Do, do you guys have like proposed language or? a suggestion on how we should handle it? Um, I think we would lean on what um, VACTED's recommendation um, would be at this time, um, which is to, if any language is included, to have it as flexible as possible. And I also do wonder if there's a policy, if you do move forward with the, uh, the kind of the policy framework, if that could be addressed like in, in the implementation plan. Again, like I was a little bit confused with it mentions a policy, a school board policy, as well as an implementation plan. And so if there is indeed both a school board policy and an implementation plan, if the um, kind of expansion into the middle grades could be a part of that implementation plan. I was a little confused with that section, though, so I'm not sure if that would be a proper vehicle. Thanks. Yeah, that section three, again, I, I agree that challenging to coordinate, implement all those visits. 
um, might be something section three, the house could work on for us. If we wanted to, if we wanted to pull it. And I think your point is well taken, genuine opportunities, um, kind of a strange word, vague enough to, um, uh, Yeah. Pause. Pause. Yeah. I think too, um, with the core principle that we discussed that was in agreement with all of um, the superintendents that were on our feedback sessions is that a non-competitive funding mechanism might help to address some of the access concerns as well. Um, it's a big undertaking to shift that funding mechanism, but it was a shared value amongst the participants, both CTE directors, superintendents, and um, superintendents in more traditional LEAs. Section three. Section three, I think we might end up striking. Um, and actually, I wonder if uh, there's another big change that they suggested. Oh. I'll see if, I know Sue Siglowski, I think Kara Zimmerman works for Sue Siglowski. She's coming in Correct. tomorrow on something. So maybe we could ask Kara Zimmerman to also just testify on uh, 304. And Chelsea, what I'm gonna probably end up at, because there are so many moving parts, would you be willing, would uh, your association be willing to work with the Agency of Education to just see if we can all get to a uh, good spot where AOE is in agreement with all of you, school board association. I know you're just talking, I'm just asking you to speak on behalf of the superintendents, but it's getting to the point where uh, it, it would be helpful if all of you had a conversation with AOE or some kind of meeting and saw where there might be some common ground in a bill that we could push out. And I know part of it's going to in John what Agency of Education says tomorrow around financing. Yeah, you're talking to about the whole bill, not no, necessarily about the whole bill, yeah. segment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, we are open to collaboration. I can't speak to the other parties, but we'd be happy to connect. Great, great. Thank you. Any questions for uh, Ms. Myers? So I think what uh, Ledge Council is going to come down. Anybody can, we're going to have a quick conversation with her about a couple of other bills. And then I'll probably just stick around. Anybody who wants to stick around and go through this bill with her, happy to have you. But I'm just trying to tee up a few of our final pieces of work before the end of the week. Yeah. How are we going to decide about the oversight piece in Section 7? Because we've been getting sort of similar testimony to what Chelsea gave us, which is it doesn't matter if it's the state board or the AOE, but as long as they update the rules. How do we need to make that decision? Yeah, I mean, for me, this is a section that I'm thinking of. This is the one that moves away from the state board and gives it to the uh, AOE. Yeah. yeah. It seemed to me to make sense to take it away from the state board, um, given capacity issues as um, have the buck start stop with the agency of education. What are you thinking, Senator Hewitt, in terms of uh, tell me a little bit more about your concerns or questions? No, I I mean I'm fine with that. It just yeah. other than hearing from the secretary, no one's been really like Push. direct in saying like this is what we should do. That's why I was wondering how we can help make the decision. But I'm fine with that if the secretary thinks that that's what should happen and that. They feel comfortable today, but after even one month. Well, back to capacity. Yeah. You know, what again are we going to do with that extra? You know, if, if we're going to be making recommendations for physicians, um, this is a capacity issue, checking on, following up on a number of things that we have asked them to do over the past 10 years. Uh, some kind of person that, um, you know, could be needed more in this role than maybe the library book. We'll see. Yeah. No, I just wanted to highlight that Friday we've got the state board coming in to testify. I think that 
could if you invite yeah yeah okay. yeah so okay. my question is yeah who they have the responsibility now right state board this is the, yeah they okay. were, the state board has it right now okay. um, so are they doing anything well, one of the things we heard was that the career technical centers have been waiting on rules that they were going to generate for two decades. So, so that's not good. It's not good. Yeah. And I'm not sure if, you know, listen, 120, I lost sight of, yeah. but for a month and a half, 20 years, a long time. Right. I mean, I don't know. As just I mean, it would be helpful to write your testimony bottom okay. line up front. We support this, yeah, with the exception of, yeah, and we don't hear that. So, right, I mean, we're asking for people to help us to yeah. that policy, and yeah, and we're not, we haven't heard the bottom line up front, yeah. Maybe we can ask the secretary who is in the AOE specific to tech yes. centers. Like how many how many actual employees are? Well, remember started? this does ask for a full transition. They have one. They do. Yes. But and that was did. in the governor's budget. That's in the governor's recommend. Correct. Yeah. But to add, so perhaps that's who um, might do yeah. that work. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think Ms. St. James is going to add that position into this. So I think, so that goes back to the conversation I think we were just having, correct? Uh, I was thinking more three, section three, four and five. Oh, model conference. Yeah, we're going to hear from them tomorrow. Uh, um. Anything else from you, Ms. Myers? I think what this, I think what it's going to warrant in the end, possibly maybe a conversation between after we hear what the AOE puts forward tomorrow, recommendations around financing. I might ask that all of you have a conversation in the cafeteria about how best to um, work through any difficulties or disagreements and get us to a point where we can move this over to the house. Yes, I'd be happy to. And um, I, Kara is off today, but I can try to connect with her in the morning and see if we can come up with some language that maybe clears up that kind of the distinction between the policy implementation and also procedures are men mentioned in that section. So it does read a little confusing. So if it, um, it's the will of the committee, I'd be happy to try to flush out some language that might make it clearer. That would be that would be a huge help. And is the secretary in tomorrow? She herself coming in for this. I think so. That's a that's so they meeting tomorrow and then sharing it with us. She's not. She's not. Okay. Um. All right, yeah, so Meg, so I guess Beth will come in, we'll have Beth come in and take us through their recommendations. Would you email the secretary and ask her, um, actually, you and I can talk about this after we're done. Thank you. I mean, we still have a little ways to go on this, uh, but having your recommendations are helpful. Uh, and while we have you, just so you know, we're getting close to voting both of our literacy bills. Uh, library, if there's anything else that's important to you on those, you could let us know. And I know we're going to likely move uh, Senator Williams' technology bill um, and Senator Hashim's uh, New American Grant bill. So anything like that that you could just sort of take a look at, those are all nearing uh, completion. Sure. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. Okay. Why don't we go off and wait for Beth? Uh, welcome back to Senate Education. Uh, Ms. St. James, we met with uh, 
the state librarian. And I think what we would like to do is strike the imagination library. And what Aspirin uh, Del Neo suggested we do is we first, and I think it sounds like a good idea, assess the situation out there. And so what we'd like <clears throat> her to do uh, or the, I'm sorry, the literacy council to do, and this is something Catherine said she in particular would take a lead on, <clears throat> excuse me, is help us understand, um, are there areas in the state where children are of high need, economic need, to go that might not be getting the books that they should be receiving, that we want them to receive in their homes, Overarching goal is, you know, books that they can have, they can hold on to, they can read at night, and whether or not there should be also, and she'll look into this, <clears throat> or ask of her as she's agreed to, is sort of what <clears throat> what policy would work well around that. In other words, the books just arrive, <clears throat> and they sit at, you know, on the counter, and they never get looked at. Or Catherine said she would look into see kind of more implementing a program around that. So we would strike the imagination library altogether, no fun. And we would start by asking, help us identify if we've got a, a real problem out there. So a we'll report back with recommendations. Okay. So then after that, I think 303 is looking pretty tidy up. We'll talk to you more later in this week about it. And then we've got Center Hewlett 204. Looking forward to bringing those together maybe by Friday and saying, okay, we've got a literacy bill and um, we'll attach 303 to 204. And I think we'll be in good shape. Center Hewlett will report that on the floor. Right. And then Center Hashim has is uh, uh, New Americans bill, which I believe you drafted. I did, and I have, where is that bill? What's going on with it? Um, the last draft, I don't recall the last draft that we saw, but I know we worked on it last week, and I don't know if we sent you back with any recommendations. So we'll I think we'll take a look at it. Okay. And you know, we have it up for a vote, but if, when we review it with you, if there's okay. any other cleanup language, Senator Hashim and the rest of us will let you know and we'll do it on the floor. Okay. On the floor. Senator Williams is going to do technology on the floor and we'll look at that bill again tomorrow, I believe. Just go through it, see if where we are in terms of the vote. Make sure we're comfortable with it. We're going to hear a little more testimony. And then I'm happy to do libraries and miscellaneous education bill, um, which I'm sure we'll stuff with a lot of stuff when we get back. Just have to get through this week. And Senator Weeks, if he's willing, will do the career technical bill once we finalize that. And I asked the agent, the Secretary of Education, to zoom in to this committee. If she's available anytime or otherwise have a conversation with me at four. And my direction to her is going to be listen, um, that's not how I'm going to start it, but um, would you please work with school boards, superintendents, mm -hmm. others. Share your information on financing. One month. Get their feedback that they've given us today. And come forward by Friday with a proposal that we can get our heads around and maybe sleep on during the week when we're away and come back and take a little more testimony. So we're not planning to move that bill this week? I'd be surprised right. if okay. not. Oh, that's really helpful. Yeah. Only, okay. you know, there, are, there are a lot of moving parts with that. Bill. Absolutely. Yeah. And that would give people over town meeting week to talk to folks for us to talk to additional witnesses, that sort of thing. Okay. I will have a new draft of 303 for you tomorrow. The other thing, just sorry to interrupt, we did ask the University of Vermont and the uh, oh, network. 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 Yeah, 120. To have a conversation. They started that conversation today around coming together. They too will bring some language back hopefully by Friday. Gives us a week to look at it, think about it, and then hopefully you can do that as well. Okay. Miscellaneous education bill, we're going to look at trustees, state board, a couple of other things in there, 
and I'd like to move that by a week Friday. So. Can I ask this question? You bet. Okay. Will you give me further direction on when you want me to combine S303 and S204? Yeah, I think we just need to um, look at them both together by Thursday. Does that work? Just take a vote on polls. Yes, we I make a motion to stuff 303 to 204. Okay, so I'm waiting on further direction on that yeah. combination. And then for the miscellaneous bill. 167. Yep. Yeah. Do you want me to go ahead and add the trustees and the state board language as they appear now or just keep it out? I say we keep it out and we'll have orphan language and then we can put it in. Well, there are their own bills for now. Right, right, right. Right, right. so we can, uh, right. okay. So I'm not collapsing anything yet. No, what are you having 167 right now? Holocaust education, um, instruction. Virtual learning. Virtual learning. Um, I sent a lot of emails yesterday. Um, there we go. Good question. Has um, okay. It's got language from the agency on public bids. Beautiful. It has the post-secondary schools chartered in Vermont cleanup. Great. It has the uh, picking out the effective date of the um, one of the policies from the school safety bill last year. I can't remember which one. That's right. It is adding nonprofit organizations that are running child care and adult care food programs to the list of eligible agencies for lack of a better way to put a Kickstarter funding to get a food program going. Mm -hmm. Holocaust education, the, the data collection report. Mm -hmm. Virtual learning mm -hmm. with some amendments. And I emailed you about those. So you can let me know if you want to see those. Okay. Virtual learning. And home study program. Home study, great. And has no it. home study language yet, right? Or do you have? I added it in. <clears throat> it's not been posted anywhere, but okay. I did send you the most recent draft, so you have it. Great. And home study, we have some testimony coming up on that. And then I'm going to have some language possibly dealing with one of the other issues we've talked about, um, students' death, part of hearing, et cetera. I just uh, want to do a placeholder. And then the other thing is... <clears throat> I believe the House is sending us you said a school construction bill. They are working on one. Okay. And they have the pause for PCBs in that? Yes. Okay. And then what else are they sending us? Uh, Ms. Rep. Tesha Bus. Bus mentioned there's another bill. Yes, yeah, a Bo board Bo of Co cooperative education services called the BOCES bill, which allows supervisory unions to get together, form a brand new entity yeah. um, to provide shared services. And then I did, I, I don't know if Tasha is their liaison, but she seems to be acting at it, which is great. We'll give her something at the end of the session if she's successful into that trophy. Um, okay. He is mentioned that they're going to work on this, they're going to send some miscellaneous that give our way. Did I hear you say and I could have misheard it, that the House has a bill with a PCB pause in it? There is currently language in the House Education Committee bill that's not been voted out yet. Oh. Um, their school construction that's bill school construction. Yep. Right. has a section towards the end that would pause PCB testing, and I believe the language is um, uh, uh, doing that bill uh, jointly with my colleague Rick. Okay. Um, I believe that language is taken directly from a bill that's under wall, the House bill that's under wall. I don't remember the number. 486. Oh, that's yep. good to know because I didn't, I didn't. Well, that's why I was afraid we just don't have time to hear from everybody. If they're sending it to us. Now, if they don't, which I think they will, we can take 486 after crossover and add whatever we want to it. And I think we might make that into another bill, anyhow. There might, they, I believe mm -hmm. they're also working on another bill related to PCBs with Michael Grady, but I'm not. That's right. But I don't, I don't know yeah. the status of that bill. I just know he's been in that committee. So I don't know if that language is leaving their committee. 
if it's traveling in a standalone bill, I don't know anything about it. I just know that that's something that they've been working on. Well, hopefully we haven't taken on too much, but that's what we've got. The other thing that I know people will come down and ask, what about this, what about that? Ginny's bill on cardiac arrest. You know, if we have some time, if we attach that to some, you know, there are all sorts of little things that we can also get done during this. If they're only sending us two bills, we'll have some time. Okay. Well, three, if you if get you're the in plan, yeah. and I don't know about a standalone PCP. Right. Okay. We're sending them 17, if you include everything. School construction and BOCES are big. Literacy, right. Just, literacy and CTs are huge. I don't want to get into a fight. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> not mine. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just, I'm kidding. There will be a lot for you to go over <laughs> after. The <laughs> BOCES seems huge. Yeah. It's a lot to wrap your head around. Yeah, it's new. It's, so it's Charles, new. Charles kind of New York. New York does do that. Board of Collaborative self and self Cooperative Education Services. Education Services. Mm -hmm. Can we go off? I think we're done. Let's be confused with the problem.